that. We know it's early, right? We know it's difficult to call. We don't have a crystal ball, but we just got to stay in the game. <laughs> We are going to down to see Tim and the Iki guys. Have you seen Charles' shirt he's wearing today? Look at this. Hey guys, how are you? Hello Tim, how are you? How are you? Shane, Shane, Shane. Nice to see you, how are you? Nice to see you too. Nice to meet you, honey, I'm Shane. I'm you know, very pro a lot of decentralized exchanges. It'll be interesting to see how institutions treat it, right? Because institutions want to know who the counterparty is, right? They want to make sure that there's no counterparty risk. And also, they want to do AML and KYC, right? They want to know who's on the other side of that trade, right? If it's like, yeah, you don't know, it's going to be difficult. I mean, when you look at dark pool liquidity and how that's changed, it's all come from a centralized space. There'll be a dark pool, but something like a liquid net you're still dealing with a regulated yeah. entity and in order to get signed off on from compliance and regulatory that kind of makes them feel good but I think that it's not that people aren't willing to do it although there's no framework they are certainly engaging and they want to learn and they want to know and I think when you look back at the start of 2017 total market capitalization combined was 20 billion by the end of 2017 it was 800 billion that caught a lot of people off including the major institutions and the regulator well I think now what we're starting to see certainly in London is we're starting to see a, you know a very big change from the ICO now rolling over into the STO yeah and yeah. a lot of people yeah. that are approaching us yeah. um, have looked at the STO model, which, which needs to have more of a regulatory framework yeah. around it, or needs to certainly be approached like it's a security. Yeah. I'm Shane Kehoe. Yeah, nice, nice to meet you. How are you? Nice to meet you guys. Hey, Hugh, how are you guys? Nice to meet you. He's our, he's our CIO. We lead our organization in a way to where it's not only institutionally compliant, but it's done with uh, the ethics that we think are required to shepherd this technology. The technology, as you know, is so powerful. And the opportunities that this technology can provide can either do amazing things for humanity or could hinder and enslave humanity like never before. So making sure that when we operate, we operate with people of ethics and that have that understanding of the technology and the power is important to us. And your relationship and Travis's relationship, how far do you go, go back? How did About you get to know each other? years. Six years. Yeah, okay. knew him in Chicago, and Chicago is a, a fun, a fun city. Both of us have. Uh, were you working with Sock Gen at that time, or where I was? Yeah, yeah. and yeah. I was I was at a hedge fund called Magnetar Capital. I know Magnetar. Yeah, yeah, and then um, as you can probably tell, we we take a uh, yin and yang approach here right. with uh, with building <laughs> Eki guys. So we've got the lifelong technologist, uh, network systems engineer by background, and a guy that's been around this technology since before the BTC white paper was even written. Yeah. And that's combined with, uh, you know, a guy that had a career in, in, in traditional hedge fund asset management. And uh, we think when we put those two things together, it's, uh, it's, it's the right combination of, of skill sets and knowledge bases to go and, um, you know, make the best investment decisions possible for the space. And that strategy going forward will be what? Like what will be your kind of mandate or your strategy? Is it more of a trading strategy? Is it long only where you are being? Um, Multi-strat. Multi so 25% so of, the, of the assets under management are dedicated into venture investing in the crypto asset space. Okay. So Traditional we'll at, venture, we'll equity, we'll stakes. We'll tokens and equity. So right. new, newly listed tokens and the equity of the entities that are issuing the yep. tokens. And then 75% of the assets under management is dedicated into a long, short multi-strat which is liquid hedge fund strategies applied to the crypto asset space, which right. is a lot like what I've been doing over the last seven years in right. Magnetar and at Point72. Right. Um, we also have an internal ventures business, which I, uh, which Tim runs, that I half-jokingly call our accidental incubator. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and so we were just seeing some, some opportunities come across our plate in the crypto asset space that were... Um, you know, too early to just write a check into from the venture fund perspective, but too compelling to just walk away right. from and right. say it's not for us. 
So we, uh, Tim's kind of leading the efforts on spinning up a, a few different things there. We got Liberty Block was one of those. Right. Yeah. Byzantine's one of those. We got about half a dozen irons in the fire there that, that, uh, that we think are, are some pretty compelling opportunities. So. Well, and how do you find the bit. difference when you, you know, where you're looking at an you know, equity long short strategy on, on traditional markets compared to the cryptocurrency markets? I mean, what, what differences do you see? Uh, and how do you, and, how, and how, do you, how do you deal with those challenges? Or opportunities, maybe. So the, so the infrastructure is drastically different, right? That's, that, that's kind of one of the first things, right? Is just uh, the types of things that you just take for granted working at a, a world-class hedge funds in, in terms of uh, the, tr the trading infrastructure, the, the uh, portfolio management, something as simple as just having a Bloomberg terminal that's got every, sure. every piece of data that you would ever need. Yeah. You've got All a whole markets. ecosystem of equity sell-side research yeah. that's providing you know, pointed thoughts and, 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 and observations about the asset class that you're looking at. Um, and, and, and then, you know, an, another big massive difference is that uh, valuation frameworks. And, uh, uh, you know, for the S&P 500, we've been looking at price to earnings ratio for yeah. going on 100 years, years now, right? right? Um, and uh, like I, I tell people, so I didn't, I, my career was focused in energy investing, energy yeah. equities investing. Yeah. So if I'm going to buy, buy a, a share of Exxon Mobil today, am I paying a lot or a little for a share of right. Exxon Mobil? Well, you, well, can, you, can, you in, can... In my old line of work, I got about you can value 40 it different tools in the tool shed yeah. to help me decide whether or not I'm paying a lot or a little. So then you, you... And a lot of those are metrics that are based on revenues, earnings, cash flows, assets, growth. You know, I can take my oil price assumption and plug it into my Exxon Mobil model. Yeah. It'll spit out an EPS. I can put a PE ratio on. There's all kinds of different ways. Essentially, all of that goes out the window as you move into this new asset class, and so you have to you have to kind of do a lot of fundamental research around um, uh, around uh, the, the 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 manner in which uh, you can look at the fundamental drivers of valuation for these asset classes, and you can look at things like network activity, right? And we know that there's a relationship between network value and network activity, and yeah. you can measure that with on chain metrics, you can measure that with various different wallet forensic, you can measure that with um, uh, community vibrancy metrics like, like uh, things that are going on in GitHub, yeah. you can measure that with um, uh, 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 sentiment analysis, natural language processing, because you know, one of the really interesting things about uh, this space relative to traditional hedge fund investing is that smart people talk out loud about what they like and what they yeah. don't like in this asset class. And yeah. that, that, that uh, opens up for a whole bunch of interesting possibilities. And that will develop, right, as well. All, all, all those critical points, right, they will develop as the space matures, right? Yeah. After we start to see adoption, or after start to we see revenue, or we start to see some other framework that we can attach a valuation to, Absolutely. right? Yeah, uh, we, we're developing a lot right. of those tools. I was going to say, we, we, we like to think we're kind of at the bleeding edge of, right. of understanding um, uh, this highly dynamic sort of uh, uh, framework of, of how do we value these things. It's an incredibly f uh, foundational question that has not been answered in this ecosystem. I can tell you for sure that our understanding of value accrual in crypto assets today is drastically different than it was a year yeah. ago. And a year before that, it was essentially non-existent. Existent, right. Yeah. And so, you, you, you know, you posit that against like the intelligent investor, Benjamin Graham, that was written in the late 30s, I think, yeah. and is still one of the most so relevant. seminal books mm -hmm. yeah. on, on equity investing, investing ever. Right. So that's exciting. Yeah. Right. yeah, that's exciting. I think it's the opportunity that we realize, right? And, uh, and that's, what, that's what excites us, is that we know it's early, right? We know it's difficult to call. We don't have a crystal ball, but we just got to stay in the game. And everything that we're looking for, all those points, all those data points, all those projects, all those companies that will start to use maybe even just a small set, five or 10% of their business onto the blockchain and how that starts to roll out. I mean, when you've got the opportunity to see it right from inception point, right? Yeah. And I'm, I'm talking about as early as you were looking at the mining side of it. I'm talking about when you look at the inception point of institutional capital now and have been looking at the space for a year, but still very much not involved. It's going to be interesting to see how that all rolls out and all the products that come around with that and the regulatory framework and the custody, et cetera, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. So as, as you are building out the templates for these contracts, um, 
how um, were, were you making sure that you were building what was required because it's still very early days. How were you getting that feedback? How did you know, and I'm sure it's going to be an ongoing process, yeah. but how did yeah. you kind of know? Was, was it kind of a gut feel or yeah. was it kind of like, you, we realized it wasn't about writing checks, everyone's got money. Mm -hmm. It's about actually bringing something else to the table and we realized that community was power. Yeah. So from that inception, Charles joined us, Oliver joined us. We now have a team of nine. We got Mark De La Salle, who's an older guy from Accenture who's come on with a, a wealth of knowledge. I'm from the CRM business. We've hired several other blockchain analysts. We've got loads of different advisors who've worked at you know, New Vista for private banking and now also on the tech side. What that's actually resulted in in SVK Crypto, uh, partnering up with Block One. We're now one of the venture capital partners. We run a fund for $50 million, solely focusing on investing into very early stage blockchain technologies that will utilize EOS IO protocol. Um, we're really happy with, with where we are, but we realize that we're only really getting started. This is the first fund that we've done. And uh, since that inception point, we've continued to build the largest monthly meetups in London. We had 500 people rock up at our last meetup. You were at our meetup before. We run a daily podcast, which Charles does every day, which you're all gonna be on later, by the way. Uh, we have Marco who does all our filming, <coughs> creates content. And more importantly, we realize that this opportunity that we've all been given is an amazing opportunity and we want to seize it literally by by our hands each and every day. We're passionate to the core about what we do, almost to the point of unhealthiness, and we realize that uh, we have a lot of fun doing it. So thank you very much for hosting us, and this is why we're here today. How's it going? I'm Shane from SVK Crypto. Hey, hey. <laughs> how are you, buddy? What's up? Are you well? Hey, What's you feel, up, you feeling good? Uh, David. Hey, how are you, David? How's it going? I'm Shane. Shane, nice to meet you. What's your story? You well? I'm doing pretty good, yeah. Cool, man.